So, um, anybody have any questions before we get started? Um, okay, we stopped whatever that day was. Thing. I get, we talked about the good, the good and the bad about sole proprietorship, the good and bad about a partnership, and we got to the good about corporations, and we're going to get to the bad about corporations. But I want to take a little detour for a couple of minutes first. So, ignore the fact that this says corporations up here. Uh, don't do this to me. Please hold everybody on. And we're back. Okay. So, I actually, I'm not lying to you, I actually did a little bit of reading the other day. I actually read a couple of headlines and news articles. I didn't actually read the articles. I said, hey, would you say, was it Garfield or something? <laughs> Calvin <laughs> Hobbes. <laughs> okay, so the headline of the article it was Ford Motor Company was talking about the steel tariffs and stuff. What's ended up happening to Ford is they said it's going to these steel tariffs are going to chew into their profit to the tune of like a billion dollars. I think one or ten billion. I can't remember. Somebody get into Google and write up the real estate down. Yeah, that's huge. So what's happening there? It's harder for Ford to make cars because the steel's more expensive, right? So, just your opinion about Ford? Has your opinion about an F Ford F one fifty changed in the last twenty four hours? No. Has your opinion about the Ford? Focus or fusion or Mustang or anything that changed your life money? But no, I so have one. Demand, demand has to change, but supply has changed because of these tariffs. So, what's the end result going to be? The, the price of each car is going to go up. And what's going to happen for it? They're going to find themselves in the situation of you know, the amount of cars. They're going to sell, it's going to go down. So, is this only affecting Ford? Oh, no, it's going to be a GM Chrysler, too. But just uh, this is earnings season every quarter with a publicly traded corporation that we're going to talk, talk about in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. anyway. uh, but they have to, because they have multiple owners, so they have to tell all the thousands of owners about what's going on with their business, and they have to do these quarterly earnings reports. And in that quarterly earnings report call thing that Ford did yesterday, because it's at the time of the every three month period and uh, they're saying well you know, our profits going to be going down and our sales in the future are going to be going down but it ain't our fault it's this steel tariff is going to hit us in the tune of one billion. one billion ten billion whatever that number happens to be it was one billion was, oh you did okay one billion thank you uh, how, much Ford worth? Hmm? how, uh, how much four was worth Oh, I don't well, know. I don't no, what you, uh, what you have to do is look at their annual report. You have to look at their, to look at what they're worth, that's looking. Companies don't really have net worth, do they? No, they do. The value of a company is two things. You know, a company, you know, a corporation, which we're going to talk, we talk a little bit about this Tuesday. More than 100 but that's but that's not the thing. But that's not the number we need to look at. Look up for shares, right? Yeah. No, look up for net income. That's the number we need to, that you really are wanting to get to. What's happening here? It, oh. the, the value of a company is how many shares are there times the price of each share. Our net income is seven point six billion as of twenty sixteen. Okay. But their revenue was 150. Oh. There it is. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll talk about their Okay, welcome to finance class. <laughs> finance 250. So, in Matthew and Connor's case, there was two shares of the company. Only two. He owned one of them. He owned one of them. So each of them owned 50 percent of the company, right? And then, how much did those shares be selling for? In the case of a publicly traded company like. Ford or Microsoft or Amazon or that kind of thing, 
there's millions of shares, tens of millions of shares going out there. So for the net worth, the value of the company, the value of Matthew and Connor's restaurant, the value of that restaurant is what? The value of the delivery trucks, the van, the ovens, refrigerators, chainsaws, all that stuff that they have, plus any goodwill relationships they have with the customers, any value in the marketing of the name, the name recognition, because people recognize the name of their restaurant and that means something to people as far as them coming in. Add all that together, and that's how much the company is worth. Let's say the company's worth fifty thousand dollars, two shares of it, what does that mean? Matthew shares worth twenty-five, Connor shares worth twenty-five, right? So in this case, I'm going to go backwards for four. Let's just say that there's uh, probably not certain. There's 500 million shares of Ford stock out there, and if each share is selling for <laughs> no, let's just keep it simple here. Uh, if each share is selling. On stock exchange, you look at the stock quote and it says how much a company's worth, $10 a share. Then how much is the company worth? $10 times 500 million, that is a $5 billion company. Apple and Google have gotten to the point where they're, uh, Apple and Amazon, excuse me, have gotten to the point where their share price is a couple hundred dollars each, but they've got enough shares might actually be 500 million, that those have crossed, I mean, two, I'm right back, one trillion dollars total value of the company. Y'all heard those numbers get rolled out in the news in the last month. Apple passed it and, well, I think Amazon passed it too. Amazon, Apple got there first, but Amazon got there not long afterwards, but Amazon's going to be a new trillion long before Apple will. But anyway, so that's the value of the company, which is what Tyler? Yeah. I don't know, that just moment made it very. That, that's what Tyler was asking. But that's not, as far as Ford, this $1 billion hit, they said it's $1 billion hit on their profit. Their profit is a lower number. They only made $7 billion, 7.6 in 2017, you said. Last year, they only made $7.6 billion. This is plenty. It goes into the pockets of the owners. Their income, their net revenue, they sold $156 billion worth of cars. But of that $156 billion worth of cars, I don't know, $100 billion of it was spent on making the cars, paying employees, building cars, electricity, that kind of stuff. Then another $20 billion on all the advertising stuff they do, another $20 billion on taxes they have to pay, another $5 billion on bribing politicians they have to pay. So when they're done paying all their bills, the leftover that is available to go into the pockets of the owners is only $7.6 billion. And why are the owners owning the company? Because they want money to be coming into their pocket. Remember, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. For yeah. sure, it was just Okay. <laughs> I wish y'all were thinking about marketing class, but this is weird, but it is in parallel economy. So, what happened to the owners of 7.6? Now it's looking like, thanks to Trump's price war, their uh, tariff war, trade war, it's down to 6.6. 7.6 .6 down to 6.6, that's about a 15% reduction. How would y'all feel if your boss came up to you and said, I'm going to cut your pay by 15%? You better increase my benefits by 50%. <laughs> nope. yeah. I'm going to reduce you pay by 50%, period. Okay, I'm out okay there's some, some of you out of here, some of you middle fingers, some of you like, well, I'm going to tell the boss okay, but when they ain't looking, I'm going to start stealing. Right? You know who you are. You know who you are. You know who you are. <laughs> I'll steal some like this pen or something. Yo, know, Alice is like, how do you think I got the left off? <laughs> so, what y'all are gonna find is for a lot of companies, it's 7.6 billion, $156 billion worth of sales. This is only about 5%. Ford is only making about 5% profit when it does sell for doing their business. That's 5%. What? Well, but yeah, that's every all the bills have been paid. But they're only making 5%. And a lot of companies in corporate America, their profit is only about 5%. 
five to ten percent. That's it. So then what happens if your sales were to go down by just a little bit? That's less profit. The first thing that goes away is profit. Because your bills still have to be paid because you still gotta pay, you know, if Matthew and Connor, Connor's not here, that's why I'm having a hard time remembering his name. Matthew and Connor, they still have their oven payment. They still have their refrigerator payment. They still have their truck payment. They still have the rent payment on their restaurant. Those don't change based on the fact that they're selling fewer meals this month than last month, right? Maybe they can tell some of their wait staff to not come in as often and they'll save a little bit of money. But most of their expenses stay the same, so this profit goes away like that. And that's why the recession back in 2000, starting in 2008, which just hit its 10th anniversary a few days ago. Uh, that's why it's such a nightmare because the unemployment going from like about 6% to 12%. Right now. No, that's what happened then. Well, six to ten for twelve percent. So instead of one out of every twelve workers not working, now it's like one out of every six. So you can't figure out okay, six percent less people working. Well, guess what? Our sales are going to go down by six percent. Well, our profit margin is only five percent. That's why a bunch of companies ended up failing. They're struggling or barely squeaky by. It ain't easy in corporate America. And if you're a corporation and you're doing something, you make a 20, 30 percent profit, guess what? Somebody's gonna look at that and say, what? That's not wrong. Break me off a piece of that. Didn't we have somebody competing, breaking with or that last time? If you're making too much profit, or you work loosely, so if you're making too much profit above an average amount of profit, you're just asking for somebody to say, dude, I can do that too, and come in and compete against me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know I did it with a price for the donut shop, but I don't know if I did that for the profit of the donut shop. I can't remember. But yeah, either way, either way, so here's dirty little business secret number one. If you make it, I'm putting this at the top of the list. If you make it a profit, keep it a secret. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, it'd be nice for you. Yeah, I'm Mr. and Mrs. Successful Business Person. See my nice, fancy, shiny car out there in the parking lot, my awesome big house, my boat, my jet ski, and that kind of stuff, and doing what I'm doing. Well, people are going to say, well, as dumb as you are, you're doing what you're doing. I can do that too. And suddenly you just lost half your customers because you got competition. If Connor and Matthew sit there and they've got their restaurant and that's their income, they're riding around in nice cars, living in a nice houses, what's going to happen? Somebody else can open up a restaurant right next door. And then you went from one restaurant in town to two. So guess what? Half the customers are going to keep going to their restaurant. Half of them are going to go to the new place. They just lost half of their income. If you make it a profit, keep it secret. Unless you've got more work that you can handle and you welcome competition. Anybody? Why do you let somebody else hire the extra workers making extra profit instead of you hiring the extra workers making extra profit? Right? So rule number one, keep it secret. Okay, you Lord of the Rings people, keep it secret, keep it safe, right? Okay. Wondering to rule all. Yeah. That's what my wife was thinking when she put my beginning yeah, my wondering, right? Wondering to rule all, I'll just write care of this Okay. Wow. Yes. Oh, just, okay. So let's roll. So y'all went down all of that? You know, we just had this finance, had some econ, had some, I don't know what all we had in our day. Finance. What? Oh, no, I, I, I like finance. Finance is different than accounting. I teach oh, finance. I, 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 and I'm teaching finance, finance 215 combined with the agriculture to 143 next semester. Right here, same bad time, too. Mondays and Wednesdays. Too. You're looking for what? Right? And you'll count general electric. There you go. Okay, so. Where does the agriculture fit in that? Because there's an agriculture finance class and then there's a regular finance class, and I put both classes together at the same time because eighty percent of it is the exact same. So I thought you mean you taught an agribusiness class. I did. Well, I thought you taught one, and then you just taught an agriculture class. Oh well, agribusiness. I am using word agriculture and agribusiness interchangeable, but yes. Yeah. So I do three. I teach three of them. I'm doing ag marketing combined with regular marketing this semester. And then egg human resources, slash regular human resources, and then egg market of uh, egg finance and regular marketing next month. For those you like egg, what it just you know, they, there's some specific examples of examples that we use and we just happen to go in the agriculture direction and then there's a couple of chapters that are agriculture specific, but most of it isn't 
that's why I find the first thing you put together. So, marketing. I just marketed for my classes, right? Okay. Now, let me see if I can remember the other one that I wanted. There's another supply and demand thing that. <coughs> so, supplies for the damn world. Was it called a shortage? No. In surplus? The shortage is if they're producing less than the supply and demand suggesting they should do. This is just, it's harder for them to do. So, they're backing off. And they're raising their prices, which is just naturally going to cause us to pay Ooh, higher prices. Screw that. Not buy it then. Um, there was a second supply and demand thing that I wanted. It, just, it was in the news yesterday. I can't remember what it was. Oh, well. It, um, it, 2 percent chance that we don't make it. So, a corporation. So, the good thing about the corporation. That we talk about. It's its own entity. Oh, thank you. Um, so, the corporation, this is its own entity. It's its own standalone. It is no longer Matthew's business being run out of his checking account. It's no longer Connor's business being run out of his checking account. It's its own business being run out of its own checking account. The money is separate, the assets are separate. So it's not Matthew's oven and Connor's truck, it's the business's oven, the business's truck. And so the nice thing about that is it's easy to raise money because you can sell part ownership real easy to the company and say, oh, you want 5% of the company, you make, make it happen. Yeah. Well, then how does a corporation exactly start? Like. Because you don't have shares for a company that doesn't exist, so you can't make money that way. That's that's where it gets tough. That's where you have to do venture capitalists. You have to find some borrowing. You have to borrow some money. Uh, you find investors come in. You do like Shark Tank show. I've got an idea. I need money to make it happen. That Shark Tank show. That's exactly what's going on there. It is, but that's what they're doing. I've got an idea. I need the money to get going with it. Because I've got the idea of whatever to make, but I don't have the money to buy machines and hire people that I need to do it. So they can't do them. So in that case, they're selling ownership, part ownership. They haven't incorporated yet, but they're selling part ownership to these venture capitalists in however the agreement is are going. Or they just give up. The other thing you do is you just like write up a business plan, take business 298, and write up a business plan, and you go into the bank with paperwork, this thing saying, this is my idea, and these are my plans for how I'm going to make money, so lend me money so I can make it happen. And the more thorough your plan is, then the bank is going to be saying, well, that means you got a decent shot at making it, being able to pay us back, so we'll lend you money. But if you just go in there with an idea right on the back of the napkin, they're going to be like, I don't think you can be able to pay me back. They're not going to lend you money. Of course, we have a napkin, not even actually piece of paper. So. Yes. So, it, ain't easy. That's, it ain't easy to get started. Yeah, that's why you know, you know you got rich uncle rich aunt something like that where you can steal stuff you pass your boy like Allison does yeah. stuff like that in order to get stuff you need in order to get started but once you do get started and you've heard of it and you've heard of an IPO now I'm not talking IPA to be your you know, IPO what I thought it was like uh, initial public no. offering this is what would happen if Matthew and Connor, they already started a business, and then they, they, they're like, okay, well, we're going to go public with it, and we're going to take off part, we're going to sell, start selling, selling shares. It's their initial selling of shares. That's where the night deal was going, the corporation, you selling part ownership company. The businesses have options of raising money, stocks, bonds. A bond is just an IOU. That's all a bond is. Some of you actually probably have a bond. Did any of you, your grandma's bought you a savings bond when you graduated high school or something like that? Okay. What happens is, grandma bought to spend $50 for this piece of paper that says $100 on the front of it. It ain't worth $100 yet. It's worth 50 now. But what it says is, in the year 2013, this is going to be worth $100. So it ain't worth $100 yet. But every year, as it gets closer to 2030, it's going to get closer and closer in worth to being worth $100. 
Okay. Actually, it's cute, but why is the government doing that? That is where the government borrows money. The government is saying, you give me $50 now, I'll give you $100 into the future. Isn't that the same thing you do when you go to the bank to borrow money to buy a car? You give me money now, I'll give you more money in the future? Usually not double. Usually not double, exactly. But, but this is, I'm talking like a, a lot of these bonds, maybe a 10 or 15 year period, I'm just making up numbers. <coughs> but that's the way these, the government can borrow money that way, businesses borrow money that way. Also, it's not like you're putting $20,000 into a bond, whereas you might get a $20,000 loan. Uh, no, you can sell a, a lot of bonds for $10,000 enumerated bonds for corporate. Right? Yeah. So, anyways, but here's the thing. Who would lend money to Matthew? Would any of you in here lend money to Matthew? Yeah. Probably. Okay, so the company all like, oh, okay, now who are we talking about? And apparently, none of you lend money to Connor because he came and trust me to come to class. You trust me to leave. Uh, no, I, I have to hear my idea first. <laughs> okay, you have to hear the idea first. Good thing. But who's really the only people that are going to be willing to lend Matthew money to people that know Matthew? And Matthew's got to sit down and talk to Tyler as an individual, talk to whoever's an individual. This is what I'm thinking. This is my plan. This is how I'm going to be able to pay you back. Will you please lend me money? Matthew, how many people do you legitimately think in your life that you would be able to go to and say, can I borrow some money? And have them lend it to you? Maybe two or three. And our mom and dad on that list? Okay, so that's two of them right there. Okay. But yeah, so it, other than going to the bank with a fiscal paperwork, he can only borrow money from a couple of people. He, and who can he borrow money from? The people that are local around here, the only people that have ever heard of him. Is somebody in Kansas going to say, oh, okay, yeah, I'm Matthew, I'll lend you some money. I don't know if you are. Uh, no. I want more money from Kansas. <laughs> Kansas money, that's their name. Oh, okay. Oh. But the idea for a corporation is, okay, and they're like, okay, how many of you lend him money if his business fails? Well, okay, I'll lend him some money if his business fails, then how am I going to get my money back? Well, I know he drives a nice car, so if he owes me some money, I know he can sell his car and he'd be able to pay me back. But you got to know things about Matthew in order to do this, right? But the nice thing about a corporation is you don't have to, Matthew doesn't have to share all that information about the, not just about his business, but about the size of his house and the value of his car and all that kind of stuff. Because the business is the asset. So we can look at it and say, okay, I know what it is that I'm lending money to because I know what it's going to have. It's going to have an oven and refrigerator and a vacuum cleaner and a delivery truck. So if the business goes under, well, and you can't pay me any money, well, then I can get their truck and I can get that oven and I can sell it or whatever I want to do. How many of you lend money uh, to, like, Disney? No. How many of you lend money to Bill Gates? No. To Mark Zuckerberg? Wait, yeah, he has money, but if he's walking down the hallway and he's standing in front of the drink machine and he's making through his pockets, he's like, I got nothing. Will you lend me some money to get a pack of M&Ms? No. Yeah. Is he going to be able to pay you that? Yes. Yeah. Because everybody knows Bill Gates, right? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Everybody knows that the information out there is publicly available, it's not secret to so the ability, you know the ability to bring pay back. Okay, Disney Incorporated, are they going to be able to make money and pay you back? Yeah, Coca Cola, are they going to be able to pay you back? Yeah, so these bonds, it's the, the company will pay you back. And then you can look up information about the company and learn all that you need to learn about the company. So these loans, can go, they're easy to deal with. Okay, I can't believe I'm here, but oh well, here we go. So, I have this piece of paper. It says, I'll pay you $1,000 in the year 2030. It's got Matthew's signature on it. I've done a deal with him. Does this piece of paper have value? I gave him $500 for this piece of paper. It says he'll pay me $1,000 in 2030. Does this piece of paper have value? Yeah, it's worth $1,000 12 years from now. That ain't nothing. 
It has some value. It ain't worth a thousand dollars. It will be. It will be, but it ain't worth a thousand dollars now. How much is it worth? Well, how much should I pay you? Well, I can sit there and say, well, if I put nine hundred dollars in the bank and it earned interest over the twelve next twelve years, then it would give me I have a thousand dollars in the bank. So he needs to give me a better deal than that, so I would be willing to pay no more than nine hundred dollars for it. Because otherwise I can take my nine hundred dollars, stick it in the bank, and end up with a thousand dollars. He's certain, almost certain. Yes. And so the more questionable of his character, the lower the price is. Right? The more questionable his idea, the lower the price is, right? So y'all are kind of gambling and he's not going to take the money and flee to Rio or something like that. So you're like, yeah, but this piece of paper says $1,000 in the year 2030. I'm only going to pay maybe $500. For it. <laughs> so this piece of paper is worth $500. And as he gets closer to time, it's going to be worth closer to $1,000. But here's the thing. This thing has value. Well, what, what do I do three years from now? When my child comes up to me and says, Dad, congratulations, I got accepted to Yale, and that's where I want to go. I say, Woohoo! And then I go in the other room and I start sobbing. It's going to cost me quite a lot of money. Right? So I need to start selling stuff to make the money to pay college tuition payments, right? I've got this thing of value. It's worth somewhere between $500 and $1,000. Who can I sell it to? I, if it's got Matthew's name on the bottom of it, I can only sell it to people that know Matthew. Right? That know Matthew and are stuck in into believing that he's a nice, honest, trustworthy, reliable guy. Right? So there's not so. So this thing, but what if this piece of paper, instead of having Matthew's name on the bottom of it, what if it say Coca Cola Incorporated? Coca Cola Incorporated. Are they going to skip town and go to Rio in the next few years and not be able to pay me back? Unlikely. Unlikely. How many of you have heard of Coca-Cola Incorporated? Everybody in here. So, I wouldn't have to explain a whole lot in order to talk to y'all about buying this piece of paper that says Coca-Cola on the bottom of it. I'd be like, Coca-Cola Incorporated, $1,000 in a few years, and you start doing math, you're like, well, that's about as solid as the bank, so okay, $900, right? <laughs> it had Matthew's name on it. You would either have to know Matthew, or I would have to sit there and explain in as much detail as possible what I know about Matthew, right? <laughs> so it's easy for me to buy and sell these things, and I have nothing to do with this company. So that makes it easier for me to buy a bond because it's easier for me to sell that bond if I need to sell it before it is yours, before that 2030 date hits. So that's why... Corporations, they have tools that you and I don't really have. The only people that Matthew could write an IOU to are mom and dad and Uncle Bill, and that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I have no idea what Uncle Bill is. Right? But corporations have these options. Matthew can't sell part of himself, and if the business goes away, then I'm going to get have a leg. No, can't do that. Corporations can raise money, it's easier to expand because of that. We talk about that limited liability when a truck goes through the fence and kills Haley's dog. She sues the company. So the company is going to lose the truck in the oven, but Matthew gets to keep his car, Connor gets to keep his TV, and all that kind of stuff. The negative things about corporations, this is the second ugliest one. I really ought to rearrange the order. Because there's too much paperwork. A bunch of paperwork involved. Because just like, is there a bunch of expense in having a kid? Yeah, seven thousand dollars before you get out the door of the hospital, and then there's all the paperwork going to Social Security Administration, applying for Social Security card. Well, in this case, you got to apply for tax ID. Uh, there's paperwork, contracts, legal ex explanations for what each share of ownership actually means, and what exactly the company is, and what exactly the company's doing, and who's responsible for this, and who's responsible for that. All it is is paperwork. Hire a lawyer if you're going to incorporate. Next, it's easy to be abused. Because in a lot of cases, the, court, the owners of the company are not the people operating the company. So then it's easy for the people that are operating the company to kind of abuse the situation and not just stealing. But um, who was it? Uh, I had Matthew and Connor, y'all had to sell 5% because there was nobody. 
Do you remember who was? Well, no, because she was the animator when selling her private business. But let's just say, let's just say they sold. They're like, well, we need a little bit more money. So maybe I was thinking about their dip. We need a little bit of money, so we're going to sell five percent of the business. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Matthew now owns 47.5%. Connor owns 47.5%. Okay, owns 5%. But she's just part owner. She's just giving them money. They're giving her a little bit of ownership so they can keep running their business. She's kind of a silent partner type thing. She's like, okay, I'll give you some money for you give me part ownership in the business and let the, let the profits start rolling, right? That's why she finds company. Is she responsible for making the decision about how much vanilla extract to put in the cake and all that? No. She ain't in the oven. She ain't in the oven. She ain't in the, oven. She ain't in the, she ain't in the kitchen. But she's part of her. But okay, so Maggie tried around with he's got the delivery van that he's using to help his kids move off to move to college this weekend. Alright. Um, Connor has the company laptop that he took home instead of to be doing business, he's doing accounting stuff, he's taking home to play video games. That kind of stuff can happen. Or it could be the, you know, magic be over there, it's like, well, it ain't just, it ain't my money. You know, I'm, you know, so he's going to go ahead and, oh, I accidentally broke a couple eggs. Now we put them in his pocket and took them home. Oh, I accidentally dropped a bottle of vanilla extract. And he actually keeps things at home and next thing you know, he's got other stuff he's baking his own cakes in his own house and everything. Right. Also, I just told you earlier, businesses, you, the corporation has to report to the owners every quarter. So every quarter, they've got to tell, okay, what's going on with business? How much their sales are, how much your profit is, what your future looks like. So she knows that she wants to stay as an owner, if she needs to change management in her business, what she needs to do. Change management. Yeah, owners, it's your company. So if she's not having people running the company, she can try to make a push to get rid of them. She only owns five. She only owns five percent, so she's gonna have a hard uphill fight, but she can start it. So if I go to Connor and start telling lies about Matthew, go to Matthew and start telling lies about Connor, next thing the two are mad, mad at each other, fight with each other, next thing no one of quits, she's gotten rid of one of the two. And then if she gets the other one on board, and suddenly she's got fifty three percent against forty seven percent, get the other one out, bam, she wins. What's that bunch of pocket cents out of Yeah. Uh, but you know, and just this oversimplified example, you know, the math doesn't really work. But in corporate America, for most corporations, there's like nobody owning more than like one or two percent, except for people like Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Bezos, uh, not Steve, Jeff Bezos for Amazon. You know, the handful, the founders that still are running the company, they're going to be owning significant portions. A lot of times, it's just a whole bunch of little. You get a bunch of little people mad. They've got enough votes to take out. Maybe one. I have a question. Okay, so um, like Facebook, Twitter, and stuff like that, do you get paid because people like want to buy their corporation? Because like it was free, how are they, like where they profit? Advertisements. Uh, oh, well, advertisements and data. Because, yes, because Facebook is building a profile on every last one. Twitter is building a profile on every last one of you, which is valuable to advertisers. Because they know that you're interested in chainsaws and puppies and you hate cats based on what you posted. So then when a pet food supplier comes and wants to advertise, they say, well, we need advertise dog food to her. Don't waste your time spending money selling cat food ads to her because she hates cats. So they know buying an ad on Facebook is going to have a lot better return than buying an ad just on some Joe Schmo's website, buying an ad in the Southfield Enterprise newspaper, that everybody's going to see it. Cat lovers, cat haters, cat everybody's going to see that ad. And so that brings value. And so the ads that they sell, they're a higher percentage, and so that's why they're doing everything they can to keep you on Facebook, on Twitter, as long as possible, so the more minutes you're spending there, the more ads you're shooting your eyeballs, and those are the quote unquote the high value ads, the more money that they make, and that's how they're making their money. And that's why they're trying to rope you into giving them more information so they can build a better profile for you. That's why they bought WeChat, that's why they bought Instagram, talking about Facebook here. 
the more stuff that they can find in or their separate accounts. See, I was about to say because I see a lot of um, advertisements that I'll see on Instagram, like it'll say sponsor, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I'll yeah. literally go to Facebook five minutes later and I'll see yeah, the exact right same advertisement yeah. yeah. because they know who you are. <laughs> they know who you are. Well, they're constantly asking you about your profile too. Right. I have more stuff about. Yeah, then that's it. and as you add the new stuff, they ain't forgetting the old stuff. So they know, and that's what they're trying to do. And Facebook is great for your bio. They'll have stuff like, like your what's your political affiliation? Yeah. And stuff like that. Like who puts that? Like eighty percent of the people on Facebook put that information. Really? It's yeah. I mean, it's. I'm not on Facebook. I haven't been for a while now. Are you more of an AOL type of guy? No, I'm more of a leave me alone, set up my lawn kind of person. That's just my virtual lawn. Yes. Oh, my second life one. <laughs> um, GeoCities, that was way too I never did very good GeoCities, right? Um, I forgot what I was going to say there. But, anyway, but uh, Amazon is now the third largest online advertiser, advertising platform. Not advertisers, they sell, I mean, they do advertising <laughs> themselves, but advertise with all the sponsored. Products that are placed in Amazon and all those, and, and then they feed their ads to other websites and that kind of stuff too. They're the third largest behind Facebook and Google. But then you see, like, when you go to Amazon, there's the um, like men's gifts or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're all name brand, high priced stuff. It's yeah. no like none of the other stuff that you're really trying to look for. All, all, all of the, when you go on Amazon, it'd be recommended for you based on your past purchases. There's people who pay to be on that, with that list there. Those are advertisements, not just the sponsored one. When you click into daily deals, you're looking at the lightning, people pay money to be on those lightning deals and doing the discounts, but then sponsored ones that are there, all of this advertising. Yes. <laughs> um, Keep a job in Amazon corporations. <laughs> Don't get a job in one of their warehouses. Yeah, right. Really. Anyway. Oh, exactly. Yes, yes. You know, the bonds and stocks, none of them have the shares and stocks. No. A share, like on the stock market, is you buying ownership. A bond is you lending money. No, oh, but see, how much is a share worth of like the percent? Because I thought if your share is selling like 500 um, shares. If, if, no, no, if the company has, what would I say for my example before, if it had 500 million, well, one share is worth one 500 million at the value of the company. That's not a fixed percentage. Oh, okay. You, you, oh, okay. Itty bitty, itty bitty, itty bitty, itty, itty bitty fraction of that company. So basically, you're just going to see how much the whole company costs on the shares. So let's say it's a small corporation. How many shares will they have? Like 100 shares? It depends on what you do. Okay. Every company does it differently. True. Every company does it differently. And here's the, the, the next step I want to when you see the price of a stock, and you're like, well, that one's worth it. that one's selling for $10, that one's selling for $100, so that one's got to be 10 times better. No. We're all those so Which would you rather have? 10 dimes or $1? They're the exact same thing, right? right? What if we have 5 million shares at $100 each or 500 million shares at $1 each? It's the same thing. So you have to look at the total together to be saying which company is bigger than the other, which is better than the other. It ain't just the share price. Okay, so you got to look at it in terms of why are you talking about it. So, um, so there, but... You gotta look at so you have to look at how many shares are there. And a company can divide a small little company like what Matthew and Connor are doing, they might divide it up to ten shares. Two two shares if they're not planning on taking and bringing anybody in. Maybe they go ahead and we'll call it ten shares, you get five, they get five, then we got some flexibility to sell some, but if you can sell more than three, then you gotta clear it with me, kind of thing. Can they do hundred shares? They can do hundred if they want. You you divide it's your company, you divide it. It's just like I come in here and I give you a pie. Bam. Uh, it's like between you and Asma. How do you know about the money? Good. Okay. I had her so this is just a slice under here. Okay, so like you can try to tie up. How many of the slices? 
know, some people you can pizza place, they cut the pizza into eight slices. Some of them cut it into ten slices the same size pizza. It's just how you want to slice it. So do you want to slice this company into 180 of these loaders? Or do you want to slice it into two or three bigger chunks? How do you want to slice it? The smaller the slices, the more flexibility you have for selling some of their slices from time to time. Because anybody like, well, if I could buy a share of Disney for ten dollars, why not? But I'm getting invested in Disney because they want $350 a share, and I ain't got that guy to run the lane around. Right. So the lower the price, the easier it is for people to buy in. So I don't know if you've ever heard of a stock split. That's what they do. They're going to go from, well, we've got 100 of them worth $10 a piece. Well, we're going to flip that to 200 of them at 50 cents. I can't remember the numbers I said. I know. Right? Oh, $5 a piece. So it still adds up to the same thing. But we've lowered the stock price to make it afford, more affordable for more people to get into the game. But the company value is still tank. Twice as many shares, each of them have to sign. So you've already, if you've already paid $10 for one of those shares after the shares, you get two of the new shares. So, yes, you have two of the new ones to replace your one old one. That's like me taking your dollar and I give you two 50 cent pieces back. You still have a dollar. Well, isn't it like the forex trading stuff that you do? Is that the same thing? Like investment in stock? I'm, I don't know, I'm so I'm really trying to catch <laughs> well, well, none, none of this is going to be on the test board. We're, <laughs> we're just here. But uh, like, like, I, I, just, I have been in the past, not an investing class, too. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's what the whole stock market is about all these day traders. And I mean, that's all they're doing is right. buying and selling shares. And they're just. Okay. Oh, wait, what did I. How, <laughs> We're never going to finish this much. Okay. <laughs> I told y'all, when I was naming off the, the value of Matthew and Connor's business, I was like, it's the price, not the value of the oven, the refrigerator, the truck. But there's more to it than that. I also said, you know, the value of those customer relationships, name recognition, that kind of thing. Ultimately, so there's more to the business than just an asset. So, it, the bizarre, remember, y'all know money in the future is worth less than money now. Yeah. Okay, uh, th this piece of paper that said thousand dollars in the year twenty thirty, y'all said staying worth much. It's worth five hundred today because I take that five hundred and I put it in the bank. I'll have a thousand dollars in the future. But I, which would you rather have a thousand dollars today or a thousand dollars in the future? You'd rather have it now, right? So, how much do you have to give me now compared to, uh, to be equal to the thousand dollars in the future? Is so, it physically like worth less no. in the future, or is it just like mentally like to us to worth less? Okay, okay welcome to chapter eight. Um, short version inflation $500, a thousand dollars. In the year 2030, won't buy what $1,000 will buy today. Because this sun drop is selling for a dollar a can now. By the time of 2030, it's going to be selling for $2 a can. So if I give you five, if I lend you $500 now and you give me, pay me back $500 later, well, I lend you enough money to buy 500 cans of sun drop with your of inflation, the money you're going to pay me back ain't going to be enough to buy 500 cans of sun drop. And guess what? I want to be able to buy at least 500 cans of sun drop in the future. Probably more to make up for my anger and stress, or my stress of not having my money available, not having my son drop at the time, right? So because of inflation, that money is worth less. That future money, that future thousand dollars, because of inflation, will only a thousand dollars to you twenty thirty will only buy what five hundred dollars will buy you today. So what do I need to do as a lender? Charge interest <coughs> so that. If I'm giving you $500 and you're not going to pay me back till 2030, well, the amount of money you're going to pay me in 2030 better be enough where I can buy 500 cans of sun drop at least, right? So that's going to be determining what my interest rate is. So, based on that, we look at what the true value when you're looking at the stock market, what's the value of the price, the value of the company's value of the shares? Think about the price per share times. The number of shares that gives you that whole net worth of the company. And what, how that number is determined is we don't just look at the book value, you count it, the, the, the price of the trucks and the cars and the hoses and stuff. We look at 
How much profit do we expect? Though? How much profit do we expect this company to make this year, next year, the year after that, the year after that, the year after that? The year, and we're going to be deflating those, not only that if we're expecting like a million dollars this year, well, it's just going to make it do the same next year. I ain't quite going to be worth a million dollars. We did a time value money nightmare stuff that y'all have done in some of math classes. And we look at what's the present value of the future stream of profit we think that company's going to make. And if some news comes out saying that the profit of this company is going to look, the profit outlook looks better in the future than it did before, well, that's expected profit stream is going to be better. How much? Bigger? Well, I think it's going to be worth a little bit more, so we all are paying more. Stock price goes up. If something like Ford comes along saying, dude, this steel thing is going to screw us up for the next few years, and our profit is going down, what do you think happened to the price, share price of Ford last night and this morning? It went down. Because why would Kay buy parts of Matthew's business? To make profit. If she ain't expecting to get profit out of that business, she ain't going to buy into it in the first place. And if the value of that profit is very low, she ain't going to be willing to pay a whole lot to get into the game, right? But if the value of that profit is going to be high, she'll pay a lot to get into it. High risk, high reward, yes. So, when you see and every day something happens like President Trump talking about not only negotiations with China, but the negotiations with, with Canada right now, we not getting them on board with the new agreement that we have with Mexico to try to replace NAFTA and all. It all impacts. Every day, the stock price is on, just about every publicly traded company goes up or down because something is happening that's going to impact their ability to make profit in the future. Uh, interest rates, Federal Reserve just raised them by a quarter point yesterday. So guess what? Ford's ability to borrow money in the near future just got a little bit harder because they're going to have to pay a higher interest rate. So what's that mean? It's going to be harder for them to buy money, harder for them to grow, harder for them to replace their equipment. So it's going to cost them more to do that kind of stuff. So guess what? Profit in the future is going to be shrinking. Yesterday was not a good day to be Ford, right? That's just the second poking the eyeballs, right? For the owners of Ford. That's how that all rolled. Okay. Yes. So, we got some right now. so basically, for uh, you can say for 1% of my company, I can sell 200 shares. 300 shares. Yep. Yeah. You said that you said the number, whatever you wanted to be. Right, so right now, Amazon, what would you say, Ford, like 976 billion share, million shares or something like that? Yeah, I think if you want to buy like, a large number of the percent happened. Then you gotta buy a large number of shares. You gotta spend a whole bunch of money to do it. Yeah. For Ford, if you wanted to buy Ford out, you'd have to go to all of the nine people that own all 976 million shares, and you'd have to be saying, oh, well, okay, five to 50 bucks a piece, or whatever it is. You'd have to cough up that much money. But that's what the companies work. So when you buy a share and you're not, you know, like the high people that the more of the shares, you won't get dividend to them. No, you get, I mean, you get the price that it's sell for. And you can sell it if you want to, or you can keep it if you want to. I mean, it's just like your car or your lunch taking portion of itself. Yeah, but the person, you know, some people own 15 percent of the company, 40, 30. Yeah. And you sell the ones that get dividends at the end of the profit. No, they all get dividends. And we'll, we'll come to that chapter a little bit later. Uh, we've only done two bullet points in an hour or something like I need to give it back to those. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get you all the, the dividends. Like, but that's profit share. You just go one out of them, 976 million. Well, you get one 976 million of that profit. So take that 7.6 million the Ford is making divided by the 956 million owners. And then that's how we can get the profit is 10 cents, whatever. And we'll cut your check for 10 cents every three months. That's the way it works. Little owners as well as big owners, they all are owners. Okay. So, this is the big ugly for corporations. It's double taxation. Yes. And finally, the third bullet point. Oh. The, the restaurant. Is its own legal entity with its own taxpayer ID. So they have to file a tax return just like you do. Talking about this is how much money came in, 
This is how much we spent that we spent doing so. So how much profit did we make? And that, my friends, is what corporations get taxed on. Not their not their total income, their profit. It wasn't the one hundred and fifty six million. That's not what Ford is paying taxes on. Ford is paying taxes on that seven point six or whatever eight point six million billion profit. So then they pay you whatever forty percent of that. Ford, yeah, we sold one hundred fifty six billion dollars for the cars, but they're only paying a two billion taxes. So you're like two out of one fifty six. That's only one and a half percent, and they charge me like ten to what? No, because it's only profit. Because the rest of that gets taxed because. The, the rest of that money went, some of it went into your pay, your pocket as far as the paychecks, right? And then the government gets the taxes you want. So, so the 7.6 billion, they take 2 million out of it, which is about 40%. 2 billion, or yeah, what, yeah whatever corporate tax rate is, or it's 35, 40 <laughs> So, technically, they don't even really make 7.6 billion because. No, uh, yeah, no, no, that's 7.8.6, that might be after taxes. So they, their profit might have been 10 billion and then taxes. The government got three of it, now they're left with the seven. That's still plenty. Yeah. <laughs> I take it, don't give me that. But but here's the thing. Their company. Uh their their restaurant, they sold three hundred million dollars worth of food. The cash register receipts, add them all up, what is it, three hundred thousand, not three hundred thousand. That's pretty good. Three hundred thousand dollars for food. But then they look at the bills and they're like, we spent two hundred and fifty thousand on meat, sugar, ketchup, bread, electricity, labor, gas for the car, private politicians. So we Three hundred thousand went into the cash register. Two hundred fifty of it went out to keep the business running. So we've got fifty thousand left. That's our profit. Woo! So the company, that fifty thousand, the restaurant has to pay taxes on that. So the business has fifty thousand. Well, Uncle Sam and Aunt Virginia are going to come up and they're going to say thank you. I'll take ours. And so that fifty thousand becomes thirty thousand. And then what happens at thirty thousand? It goes among the owners. Matthew's like, "Well, I ran this thing, get the extra money." That's why Congress went in. So this thirty thousand, fifteen of it goes on, goes into Matthew's pocket. Fifteen of it goes to Congress' pocket. So here's what happens: when Matthew is filling out his tax return at the end of the year, he's reporting how much money did I make. Working, you know, ten dollars an hour, times forty hours a week, whatever. How much money did I make gambling, betting on horse races, and football games, and that kind of stuff? Be able to gamble. How much money? Yep. Yeah. <coughs> how much money did you win on the lottery? How much interest did you make on the money in the savings account? Oh, and oh, guess what? Fifteen thousand dollars profit from his restaurant goes on his ten forty four, which makes his income fifteen thousand dollars bigger. And what ends up happening when he turns up for me and Uncle Sam and Aunt Virginia? They'll say, I'll take some of that. So if you pick the lottery, you're going to take the drug. Oh, yeah, they take a lot of it. What? <laughs> Sorry. Would you no, please no, let me talk about the lottery? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, it, it depends on what you take along the summer to stream of payments, just how much they get. Okay. Time value money that, yeah. as we were just talking about, comes into play there. That's what, if you win a million dollars in the lottery, and you say, I want it all now, and they give you a million dollars. By the time the dust settles, you're only getting about 400000 Yeah. Because. I remember watching the game show, and the prize is like $10 million, and they're like, by the time the government takes out, it's only going to be like three. Here's the thing redefine print on lottery. You don't win a million dollars. You win $50,000 a year for 20 years. That's what you win. So what is fifty thousand dollars a year for twenty years in terms of today's money? Basically, that's the number of you win a million dollars in Virginia lottery. How much money would the state of Virginia have to put in a shoebox with your name on it, put it in a savings account with your name on it, drawing interest year after year after year to where it's going to grow? But we take fifty out. It's going to grow. We take fifty out. We get grow. It's going to take fifty out. And twenty years from now, there's only fifty left. But how much would they have to put in it? Eight hundred thousand. They put eight hundred in the bank. And that'll earn enough interest to give you the the million over the next 20 years. So then you want that 800 now? Okay, we'll give you the 800 now. But 800 million or 800,000, that's pushing you in the highest tax bracket. So Uncle Sam's going to say, I'll take 35% of that. 
and Genius can say, I'm going to take like 15, 20% of that. So that 800,000, you only bring home 400. That's the way that one works. Anyway, that's the lottery. So if you only win a million or two, go ahead and take the lump sum because 400,000, that'll impact your life. Bringing in thirty, forty thousand dollars a year extra for only twenty years, you can't retire on it or anything like that. Take long. But if you win two hundred seventy-three million in lottery, think twice about taking it out because you win two hundred seventy-three million. If you say I want it all now, they're only going to give you around one hundred and fifty. Yeah, it's still life changing, but wouldn't you rather almost have what, what's half of two seventy-three, one thirty? Wouldn't you rather have like thirteen million dollars a year coming in? next four years and the government takes all the risk anyway so <laughs> I hope I didn't lose the point but what happened to that 50,000 profit that 50,000 profit that a business declared Uncle Sam and Aunt Virginia got 20 of them bam so that 30,000 left 15 of it went on Matthew's tax return and Uncle Sam and Aunt Virginia for that 15000 they get another five of it. And then they get another five of it from Mandy, I mean from Connor. So the business made 50000 profit. Uncle Sam and Aunt Virginia, because the way it works, they ended up with 30 of it. Uncle Sam and Aunt Virginia got 30 of it because they took 20 of it straight from the business, and then they took another five each from Matthew and Connor. Double taxation. Because the profit for business gets taxed, and then the profit that goes to Matthew gets taxed on his tax return. That's the only for corporation. But we're kind of okay, a lot of people, we're okay with that because, well, oh, because of uh, the last slide. We get the limited liability. Yep, the government's going to get a bigger chunk of our profits. But that's okay because if the truck rolls down the hill, I'm not going to lose my house, I'm not going to lose my car, I'm not going to lose my TV, I'm not going to lose my pets. Right. So, for the easier, easy, the ease of raising money and that liability protection, you give extra money to all the same in Virginia. And you have the extra paperwork. The other negative thing, well, I already talked about it, is that separation of ownership and control. Kay is part owner in a business, but she ain't calling shots, she ain't making the decisions, she's trusting that Matthew and Connor are gonna make the wise decisions for the business. And Matthew and Connor being owners of the business, in that case, they would. But a lot of people, a lot of managers, and a lot of business, not necessarily. Kay is investing in this business because she wants profit checks to be coming in for the next 10, 20, 30 years. So she wants the company to be looking out for the long term. But the management is going to be saying, well, what do I got to do to get the biggest bonus check this month? So your managers tend to be looking short term. Okay, but what if we bend the rules, we cheat things, we do this, do that? And yeah, long term, it might mess up. We might take off a bunch of customers, but I ain't going to be here to get the company that much in the future anyway, so what do I care? So there's that kind of problem that goes along. So I had a lot of liability. They'll, they'll get fired, they'll leave, they'll retire, whatever the case may be. It just depends on what their focus is. So a lot of you managers, you know, they're looking for what's going to give us the biggest profit check now, what's going to give you the biggest bonus now, and I don't care what the long-term impact is. That's a car salesman that lies to the customers about the car. And they tell them it'll do things that it doesn't, and it ain't reliable, and it's a piece of junk, and that kind of stuff, you can go back and buy another car from that salesperson. No, you go back to that dealership. No, but they don't care because they moved on to somewhere else, right? Yes, I've got, I've got, I'd rather, that's some salesman, I'd rather get you a little bit, some of you money now that you possibly get more in the future because maybe I will, maybe I won't. Okay. So are y'all with me on all of this? Okay, so Mandy, how do you feel about your business making $50,000 profit and Uncle Sam and for you to take a 30 of it? We have a word for that, and it sounds like the word sucks, right? That sucks. <laughs> okay, so, so put on your evil hat for a minute. This is evil for a minute. Dr. Evil, y'all y'all remember him? Dr. Okay. Yeah. Freaking <laughs> laser. What about this? Sharks and lasers. Put that up somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so here's what you do. If this business, the corporation won't pay as much taxes and it doesn't make as much profit. But you want to make profit. But what Matthew and Connor need to do is think, is there ways that I can get money out of that business before it becomes profit? So step number one is Matthew needs to be paying, the company needs to be paying Matthew a wage. Be an employee. He needs to be an employee so that he can set himself a $50,000 a year salary, whatever it is. That should be part of it. He makes $50,000 a year. That's his salary for his work. He comes in there. A lot of these small businesses, especially farmers, they don't do that. They don't count themselves in there. They're just like, well, it's my business. It's my business. I'm running it out of my own checking desk off this whole production. I'm running it out of the household checking account. Just whatever money's left at the end of the year is it, and that ain't a whole lot for a lot of farmers. So first thing you do, get away. So that money is leaving the business, going into his checking account, because it's coming in as an expense. Part of the labor expense. Now that it, so okay, that, that's not even that's good business. <laughs> so maybe this is only makes five ten five it's ten percent that was a problem. Okay, he's getting paid for his work, Cocker's getting paid for his work. That's good business. Now let's be evil. Cocker says, well, instead of the business buying the truck, how about I buy the truck and I'll lease it to the business? So the business is paying me rent. So I'm getting rent checks coming out of the business into my checking account month after month after month. The business is taking care of the truck as far as tires, rotation, oil changes, and that kind of stuff as part of them using the vehicle that they're lending. But it's a way that I get I will lease the truck to the business. Connor will lease the oven to the business. You do that kind of thing. We can get money out there so the profit is smaller. More money's coming into their coming into their checkbook, not being called profit. It still is going to show up on your tax forms as income, but it didn't get taxed at the business level first. Right? Oh, yeah. So then here's the beautiful thing. The day that, that truck rolls down the hill and kills Amanda's dog, she sues business. She's suing business. So the business is like, well, we gotta shut down because we're going bankrupt. And we sell all of our assets. They're liable for his truck. No. No. Because it's his truck. Yeah. So the truck, so what assets does the business own? They don't own a truck. They were leasing it from Matthew. They don't own a refrigerator. They were leasing it from Connor. They don't own the oven. They don't own the building. Thank you. So, so there's nothing to sell except, I don't know, a couple boxes of business cards and a couple crates of eggs, and that's pretty much it. So the business declares bankruptcy, everything gets sold, and instead of her getting whatever, $50,000 or whatever the judge and jury said, well, she's going to get however much money that can be raised selling some huge business cards and a couple dozen eggs, right? She just got screwed, but they got protected, right? And then, you know, what ends up happening the very next day? Matthew and Connor are like, get, get together and they're like, no, I have an oven in the refrigerator and you have a delivery truck. How about we go into business together? So instead of M and C, what was MC hamburgers? They go C and M hamburgers, right? A whole new he's opened up a whole new business. It's a way to protect yourself. Uh, then you get their bank subs and make money or something like that five years. No, the declaring bankruptcy is going to screw up your ability to borrow money for five years. But that's it. Um, you can see make out of money. Yeah, they, they, they want you to make more money so you don't declare bankruptcy again and screw over more people that are trying to let you money or whatever. Because did Amanda get screwed over by this? Yeah. yeah. It's perfectly legal for them to do that stunt, but they're not going to be too heavy about that happening. Right. The government is. So you can play the game and play the game pretty well. Is that smart business for them? Or, or the other thing, maybe they just want they just take out an insurance policy, a liability insurance policy for fifty thousand dollars or hundred thousand dollars for the issue for fifty thousand dollars. The insurance company pays for it, and then they just pay their couple hundred dollars or whatever their insurance payment is every month. And that's just another business expense, and they've got the protection. They don't have to do the boo shutting down and reopening in another location and all that kind of stuff. How many of y'all have a liability insurance policy? Try again. How many of you drive a car? 
Okay, everyone, one of you who drives a car has a liability insurance policy. Because that's the minimum insurance you have to have on a car, is to pay for somebody else that you screw up when you get in a wreck. It's your fault. If you get the comprehensive, well, then I'll pay to repair your car too. But the basic is liability to pay to make whoever it is whole when you <coughs> cause an accident. So you all have a liability insurance policy for your automobile. Probably, if you do it, do you incorporate? Do you do this voodoo about, well, I'm going to buy the stuff and I'm going to lease it to the company, kind of crap? Do you buy a liability insurance policy? Depends on what are the chances that you're going to get sued. If the odds are high that you're going to get sued, Maybe you ought to incorporate, maybe you ought to look into liability insurance. If the odds are very, 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 very low that you're ever going to get sued, don't worry about it. It ain't worth the time and expense, the headache to go through all the hoops of incorporating that kind of stuff. And there may be a cheap liability insurance policy, but you maybe even don't even need that. Right? If your job is petting bunnies all day, that's what you do. You go and pet bunnies. Is anybody going to sue you? No. What's the odds of something going wrong? But if your business is a construction company, what's the odds of accidents happening and stuff? Yeah. If the your company is juggling dynamite sticks, what are the odds of something going wrong? Are you getting sued? It's pretty high. So you would want to have one incorporate to get that personal protection. You would want to have liability insurance to have that protection. So it's better to leave that I mean do whatever you say to help buy the truck for the company or just get a liability insurance. It depends. You have to, you A, look, B, copy award. I'm just saying, those are your strategies. Um, yeah, and it, like, and it depends on your own individual situation, what's going on. Um, if you think this is an individual, believe it or not, a personal liability insurance policy is fairly cheap. Once y'all actually get up, I don't have this stuff. So do as I say, not do as I do. It's probably not a bad idea for y'all to get. But if you're going out and working and doing stuff, not a bad idea for you to get a first liability insurance policy for fifty thousand, hundred thousand, something like that. Because if you accident, nothing to do with your car, but you, I don't know, you're walking along and your back falls off your shoulder and falls over the overpass and hits some kid in the head in a convertible while they're driving under the underpass, you that they get killed or something like that, you're gonna get sued. You know, that could do you in financially for the rest of your life. You can get a personal liability insurance policy, a pretty big one, but not a whole lot of money. If you think that there's a chance that you know, something can happen, if you've got a bunch of angry dogs in your property and you're okay with that, maybe give yourself a personal liability insurance policy. Because what are the odds that some kid is going to show up that can't read, you know, trespassing sign, show up on your property and get eaten by one of your dogs? Pretty high. So somebody's going to sue you for it, right? Get yourself a personal liability policy. If you're, if you're a hunter, Get a personal liability policy because then bullets will travel a mile or more easily, a mile or more. And it ricochets that kind of stuff. Every year you hear about a hunter accidentally shooting another hunter kind of thing. It happens. Did any of them plan it? Well, maybe a few of them, but just ever, you know, get yourself a personal liability insurance policy. Hunting, doing anything dangerous. If you're an Uber driver and you get Uber driving for Uber, look, and you should go by and run your but if you when y'all go somewhere in a couple of years going off before your school and you decide to do a little Ubering or lifting or something, do a personal liability insurance policy. Just to be sure. Because all it takes is the accusation. Screw you up. If you're gonna be a teacher, get a personal liability insurance policy because all it takes is one accusation when you're no longer teaching and it's nice to have a fallback while you're looking for another career because your work teaching career just got ruined because some kid didn't like you and made up a lie. All the time. Keep your office door wide open all the time. <laughs> okay, are you all with me? Yep. One slide. I think that is a record. <laughs> One slide. <laughs> Four bullet points. How about this? An hour <laughs> and 18 minutes. Four bullet points. That is a personal best. That's the end. That be Anyway, but it was There's almost two. Oh, it's true. Yo, I, I accidentally went to the other slide of time, too. So if any of you passed, I'd take some notes. 
that's right here. But it was all worthwhile, so I'm glad we talked about it and all of that. So any questions? Okay, well I'll get out and read the door because the powder and fire.